<laughs> Malcolm is the new Raz Al Ghul. Can you talk about No that? idea what you're talking about. Oh my God. Uh -huh. yeah, we need to go. No idea. That's uh, I, yes, he is, and I had them uh, make me a, an exact replica of the demon's head ring, and I've been wearing it all day, and no one has spotted it. I've, I've been wearing it for two days, actually, and no one has spotted it. And that is it. It's just so that you know that, not that I take my characters home with me, but don't fuck with me. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's great. great. That's commitment. What's well, good? I just thought it'd be a fun thing to have. You know, the thing is, it's too big for that finger, so it's that finger. And they're, uh, yeah, that's it. Yes. Well, Malcolm had something to do with Sarah's death. Do you think he could have something to do with Sarah's resurrection? I cannot reveal to you what is going. To I'm what I'm. I don't uh, like the others. I go into the, the the meetings and production meetings, and I don't like to know what's going to happen because I like to be surprised when I get the script because I'm also a, a, a nerd and a geek myself so I enjoy that kind of thing. Also it's the challenge for me to go, ooh, that's what I'm doing now and now I have to make that work and that makes it fun rather than knowing what's going to happen because if you know what's going to happen sometimes you play things a little differently whereas if you don't know, you play for what it is right there and then and, every, for, and, and for, it's more spontaneous for the audience. All, all I can say is that we know she is alive, you know, will be back, obviously because of Legends, but how she is brought back to life, oh, you're drooping, how she's brought back to life, <laughs> that will be the interesting part, but I would like to think that Malcolm has a little bit of a hand in on bringing her back. Are you going to do double duty, or will there be a hand on where you go? I have no idea. You'll have to wa wait till the panel this evening because all will be revealed and announced. We're, not, we're on a we're on an embargo till eight sixteen. Okay, but all I can say for me as an actor, this season is going to be awesome. Awesome. So the, is, is uh, Malcolm coming back to, uh, to Starling City? Or oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I'm I'm, I'm 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 a uh, it was, Mark just said in one of the interviews again, and I found out, he said, uh, Malcolm being the head of the league now, it will be very different from before. The league will have casual Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> so there might not be all the gear. And, well, no, but they might be, shall we say, infiltrating in other areas. And you just don't know they are there. Because like when the League of Assassins showed up before, you know it, it's them because of the way they're dressed. But you might, Malcolm might devise a way to let them show up and you just don't know that they're amongst us. How did you like doing those emotional scenes with Willa? I loved it. I, I, I kind of thrive on that kind of stuff because it's great to have such a kind of a diversity of, of, of a way to play him. And also when they, when they write you from one point you're you're you know an, an asshole, and then the next minute you're uh, later on in it you're you're totally uh, in an emotional scene with your daughter, and you're 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 exposing yourself. That means they must kind of like what you're doing, and kind of giving you a, a complete spectrum to do it, because not everybody gets to do that. And I'm thrilled that they will let me be that asshole. Then they'll let me be that caring father, and they'll also let me be the guy who you know. Will will tell people the real way of, of, of what it is, what it's like, rather than beating around the bush with them. I think he's the most honest guy on the show. Will uh, Will Team Arrow be under the league's protection now I that have, he, uh, he is on? Well, there's a, a uh, I, again. I I don't have an answer for that. What I I as the fan would like to see that because obviously Oliver protected Malcolm. So it's just rightly so that Malcolm will protect because they they it was probably the, the the most unimaginable alliance that you ever thought would happen, and everybody was furious at Oliver, and you know it introduced Malcolm to the group themselves in a different way because they saw you know in fact it was Laurel who said to him you know one point he saved Laurel's life and she turned and she said I wouldn't have done it for you okay I know where you stand but I'll still help you. It's that kind of thing. So maybe he will be helping them. How might Malcolm? 
How might Malcolm react to his daughter putting on a red hood and fighting crime herself? I think he is proud. He is so proud of that. But again, even though she uh, will be speedy, or a little speedy, she, um, he will still be very protective of her. He'll allow her to blossom and do her thing, but there will always be that protective realm over Thea. However, there's somebody else in the realm that I would, I would really like, and I think we're going to see that relationship be opened up and looked into. He did 22 episodes of Arrow, many less of Torchwood on per season on the BBC model. But uh, you're a supporting character in this, where you were. I'm not. I'm a regular on this, not a supporting character. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you're not in every single scene. Correct. So does it balance out that way, or do you prefer one way or the other? I, 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 I'm, I'm. I wouldn't say what which one I prefer, but I like. Uh, for eight years, I was the main character in a TV show, and Stephen and I and I have had these conversations. And he asked me a lot of advice on how to handle and deal things, deal with things, because he's now the man with all the weight on his shoulders. It's glorious to only go up to Vancouver for three days a week and then go back to my house in Palm Springs and sit by the pool for the rest of the week, because they put all my work into like three or four days, and I'm in and out. So I like that. I like that. But I'm quite happy if someone were to say. We need you every day in the show, uh, you know, every scene. I'm totally happy about that. I'm in this business to work. So either or, I love it. But I particularly like that cocktail by the pool. <laughs> <laughs> so are you and Willa training together for the sparring, or are there any kind of horror stories of how of you got it getting tense? No, we're, we're pre generally pretty, pretty careful, and our, our stunt team is very uh, protective of us. Um, Willa, uh, you know, it's funny because some of the, 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 the sequences when they're putting people in, they'll, I treat it all like dance because I'm having a dance background, so I, they can show me before the scene and I'll pick it up and I'll do it as we do it, whereas others, you know, some people, which is fine, it takes a couple of days for them to get into it. Steven does because he's in, he does a lot of the fighting himself, which is amazing. But, um, yeah, I, I, we haven't had any accidents. <laughs> On other shows, I broke a stuntman's nose. Careful with the Oops. mic now. <laughs> yeah, that, it's a killer feel that, though. Feel that. Uh, yeah. I keep catching myself with it. Will there be any challenges to his um, ascension to being wrong? I think the challenge is going to be, this is again not written, but this is my, my... The challenge is to not be so handsome. That's your challenge. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've just gone a little wet at the knees. <laughs> I've literally just fanboyed. Right in front of all of you. In my pants. <laughs> I'm not gonna give him my ring in my finger though. That. Oh. <laughs> oh, I love a good joke. Anyway, so um, uh, I think the challenge will be him maintaining his position rather than because uh, he's already there, and and you know that that was the whole thing of you will kneel before uh, Raish. We call him now because if and here's the the, the wording behind that. If you're saying Raz and you're not, you say that if you're not part of the league. So I was a rogue member, gone rogue, and it was a way to insult Raish by calling him Raz because it's the mispronunciation, kind of an insult to him. But when you are the man or you're in the league, you say Raish al -Ghul. Would you like to see Dr. Harrison Wells visiting Nanda Parbat sometime? <laughs> Can't even give an opinion on that one. Thank you. 816 tonight. <laughs> wow, all right. Captain Jack Harkness versus Malcolm Merlin. Captain Jack Harkness versus Malcolm Merlin. They would fight like cat and dog. And then Malcolm would beat the crap out of Captain Jack and almost take him to the point of death. But knowing Jack, he would come back to life. And he would probably kill him. And as soon as he came back to life, as Malcolm was walking away, Jack would grab him by the hood, pull him on the ground, and make out to him. Make out with him. <laughs> I haven't thought about that at all. I haven't thought about that at all. <laughs>
quote that sparked thousands of words. That's it. That's it. He's a liar. A liar. Everyone is just giving me I know. It's because I'm the bad guy, you know? And they like me. Uh, you were gonna. Did, no, no, no. Right. <laughs> Anyone else? What was the most challenging moment on season three? For, for me? Emotionally, yeah, emotionally or physically. Um, I don't know if would, I'd say there was a, a physical challenge. The, the challenge for me is I get a lot of dialogue. I'm like Felicity. I, you know, I get I get a lot of words to say, and I don't know. But I, I, I seem to be the one telling the story to the audience or, or kind of setting up the new way it's going to go and all this kind of stuff. And when I do it, what's really hysterical is when I'm doing it, it's my close-up and they're all standing watching me because they all want to cut me up. And then, you know, that's how we have a joke where we call her Amanda Poorbutt. Because <laughs> when um, uh, um, <laughs> uh, Katie had to do the, her speech, and you know, and then Parbat, we were all we all knew how to say it after a while. But then she came into a scene, and she had to say it, and she went, "So, um, what's this about Amanda Purba? Well, we were gone. So <laughs> those are the challenges when you're setting somebody up to fail, and we have a good time doing it. keeps it keeps it alive. Amanda Purba. <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Who's this Amanda Purba?" <laughs> Even lost it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you.